going to be a percentage of the population that is just going to go into uh, a very intense activity of reshaping uh, laws, reshaping constitutions, reshaping borders, reshaping uh, the way we look at things. Because uh, once more, this civilization have resolved the aggressivity and violence issues. So they have a level of love that would spread directly in humankind. Hello, welcome to another forum created by the Alliance for Extraterrestrial Diplomatic Contact, uh, an organization uh, with the mandate to build an, an embassy for uh, extraterrestrial here on Earth with all the uh, bells and whistles that uh, the, uh, the Vienna Convention allows. Um, and the purpose of the forum is to basically discuss about humanity and why are we doing this? What is the impact, and all, uh, and so on and so forth. So today we'll be talking to uh, well, we'll be talking talking philosophy. Uh, so uh, to talk philosophy of humanity, uh, I invited a good friend of mine from a long time ago, uh, David Uzal. He is a, a PhD in philosophy of techniques and uh, another philosophy, uh, another PhD in practical philosophy. Uh, so uh, thanks for joining us, David. Thank you, Sylvain, for inviting me here. I'm very excited to take part of your uh, uh, chats, which I've been following with great interest. And let's go. Let's go, indeed. Now, uh, a little bit of a start was um, some people don't know what philosophy is because we uh, there's a lot of definitions floating around about what is philosophy. Some people think it's it's some form of thought. Some people think something else. But fundamentally, the origins of philosophy is essentially science. Uh, all sciences emerged from philosophy. Uh, so, so philosophy is a, a way of thinking scientifically. Um, and uh, and we often think of Nietzsche, we think of Kant, we think of you know Descartes and some of the philosophers from the past uh, who have thought a lot about humanity and our purpose and our why are we here, whether or not we exist, we think, and all this stuff. Uh, sh should we add something to the basic definition of philosophy, what it is? If we had something, we're going to be here for one week. <laughs> um, but uh, as you said, yeah, yeah, well, philosophy, I would say, as a great philosopher said, philosophy is here to make things clear. But in order to make things clear, sometimes, not sometimes, you need to go to the root of things. You need to go to the principles. And, and that's the work of philosophy, to go in the complicated um, disposition of things in the world as they come to us and put them in a way that they become understandable and following clear lines and principles because everything in the universe follows some, um, some principles, some ideas, we would say, some laws. And this is a work, uh, we would say, of the philosopher to make Excellent. it simple. Yeah, because like you said, we could philosophy englobes everything, uh, just like physics. Uh, so we have to be to narrow our, our discussion to what we want to talk about. And and that's um, I'd like to lay down the groundwork. Basically, uh, we want to talk about the future humanity. So what are we becoming in a bigger universe in the sense of, well, we're we hope we're in, on the verge of contact, official direct contact with extraterrestrial civilizations, plural, possibly. Right. Uh, and that increases our vision of the universe with other intelligence from other ideas, uh, uh, higher science from outside of our little blue ball. Um, so our perspectives and our perhaps our whole humanity may change. So I wanted to talk to you, David, about, about this transformation, starting with where we we are or where we were starting a bit in the past uh so the known <laughs> right 
because we can study uh, our history. So my first question for you, David, is, um, you know, assuming humanity was visited for millennia by advanced civilizations and extraterrestrials, because there's there's a significant from other forums we I, we uh, explored. There's significant evidence of visitations and uh, from from a long time ago to today. So there's a presence, perhaps, of extraterrestrial civilizations surrounding the Earth, uh, and uh, assuming they are more advanced, they must be capable, more more uh, more sophisticated than us in science, and including genetic engineering, and therefore maybe they were they participated in creating the creation of life. So assuming that and their presence, um, as a humanity, based on this assumption, what could be our ultimate purpose? As a humanity, ultimate, well, this is a very wide uh, um, question. The, the purpose of humanity has been defined by sets of belief, depending on the religions. Uh, if you take the Christian, the Catholic Christian religion, because Protestant different, the, the role of human being was to be here to prepare for the afterlife. So the purpose of humankind actually is defined by your set of beliefs. And this is where philosophy can participate uh, in an essential way is that everything we think of the universe, of the cosmos, of everyday life is based by some premises, some substrates we receive in our civilization, at our birth, in our culture, and we consider them as being uh, natural, like things in the past people considered to be natural. We, we, we look at them to be totally uh, natural. For instance, the idea that we are progressing every, every time toward a better uh, society, a better world. Uh, this seems to be like a natural thing. No, it was not until the 16th century, the entire world lived upon, upon a traditional conception that you had to go back to the ancestors, back to the, the, the creator of uh, the civilization or the gods. So the simple idea that we are in a, pro, in a, a drive towards progress, which is so natural to us today, is not a natural idea at all. It was not natural for all humankind until uh, four or 500 years ago. So about the existence of the extraterrestrial in the universe, it's based also on some substrates, on some uh, premises. Are we alone in the universe? Uh, it depends on actually our conception of the universe. Are we in an infinite or a, a, a finite universe? If we are in an infinite universe, the question of life, extraterrestrial life, um, it's, you even don't have to ask it. It's obvious. There is obviously other life in an infinite universe. So what will be the purpose of, of, of humankind uh, regarding um, this possible infinite universe? Uh, it's a hard question. The purpose of humankind, I think it's simply to, to, to be itself. Um, the purpose of anything is to be itself, and I'm going to take a little reference on Spinoza. You know, it's a conatus of Spinoza. Conatus of Spinoza means everything tries, tries. Everything works in maintaining itself, and it's limited by uh, the other beings. So we to be, it's to maintain, to affirm yourself, and the affirmation of humankind. Uh, uh, if the question is what means the humankind to affirm itself as a humankind, um, I would say this uh, contains um, in the affirmation of our humanity, it contains the necessity to consider that our humanity is not the only one in the universe. We cannot conceive ourselves as a humanity here on earth in the same way, if we consider there are other humanities or intelligence life, or we are alone. And it's simple, if you take an example here on earth, you know, most of people on earth call themselves the humans. You know, we, you go to Africa, to South America, they, they are the tribe and they didn't see further than a few miles, whatever, depending on the state of civilization. So the state of mind of these people, will be definitively changed from the moment they will have contact with a different faraway civilization. We have seen that 
uh, we know that perfectly that this is why in anthropology, uh, when you have people like, yes, there are still about 30 people in the Amazons who didn't have, uh, which didn't have any contact with none, 13 people, none, uh, little groups, even not tribes, yes, little tribes, uh, which didn't have contact with, with Westerners. So now, fortunately, there are agencies to protect them because from the moment, from the moment these people will have a contact with someone from outside and such a different uh, civilization, such much more advanced in technology, from that moment, these people will change uh, drastically, will change the visions they look at the world and anthropologists have always been extremely careful in the sense the when you stay, you know, the anthropologists that stay for weeks or months or years, sometimes, you know, people to interfere the less, because you know that when you bring someone from outside, you change the there is the people and, and the, the people. So we cannot look at ourselves in the same way as a humankind if we consider we are alone in the universe of if there are other civilizations. So here's the question at this stage of some kind of belief. Um, it's even not science, it's belief we are alone or we are not alone. And when you are part of the ones who say we are not alone, we start to, to look at our purpose, we can say, at our goal, our dis destiny in a different manner. And this kind of change um, as consequences that we even cannot imagine. We even cannot imagine what it will mean for the structure of the human civilization, but well, there are many civilizations now that we go towards civilization, the acceptation that we are not alone, that the other uh, intelligent civilizations in the universe, by the simple fact of knowing it, even, not, even if there's not a contact, by the simple fact that we know it will change the premises on which human civilization has been based during uh, all its history. So this will be a tremendous revolution. We will start to look at everything differently. Everything will be looked differently. We, 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 we even cannot start to list the changes because these type of changes are uh, are, are, are go deep into the intimacy of a relationship. There will be much more fraternity on humankind, in humanity somehow. Uh, I guess we'll reach a, a, a higher sense of responsibility and responsibility toward not destroying ourselves. We will feel uh, somehow uh, we'll have some kind of human pride, but in the good sense of say, oh, let's show we are not totally uh, retarded here. I know that we cannot use this word anymore, but I like to feel it so provocative. <laughs> Let's say we are not totally primitive. So there will be this kind of sense of, oh, oh let's 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 show what we are able to, and will be. Um, I am sure that there will be naturally in every in most of human beings a willingness to show the best of ourselves. With us, the oh, these are going to come, and what we are going to show to ourselves, what, what they're going to show, so there's going to be this kind of pride, you know, like when you have someone coming to your house or to your country and 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 someone important and or to your company, and you want to show the best. So suddenly you say, Well, oh, the, so the big boss is coming in six months, or whoever is coming, and let's do the best, let's clean it, let's make put flowers. So we we, we may, we may. That for sure we may do uh, uh, um, do that, and and so the, the the change will happen. Even talking, even without talking about the, the contact, just the idea. Like let's say they discover the soft sea from the distance, or through whatever that there's a planet uh, five years, uh, three uh, light years away from here, where there is intelligent life. Um, this could the sim simple knowledge of it could save humankind.
and humankind will not feel as lonely because there's a sense of loneliness. Imagine to be alone in this huge universe, this kind of huge dark space and suddenly, uh, oh, we are alone here. This creates, participate to this kind of um, global depression. We're in a global depression of mind and of devitalization. Humankind, it's on the way of its devitalization. There's like no willingness to live, like any disease, we are totally freaked out and afraid and we protect yourself. We, we are devitalizing uh, our humanity. And um, I believe this sense that we are alone in this huge universe. Uh, it's like if you are an individual, like you feel alone, this helps. It doesn't mean all people are going to be depressed. Some people live in an, in an island, like this Japanese man I saw lately that was late for 25 years in an island. Isolated, was very happy, but this is exceptional. Most of people, and it's normal and understandable, if they think they are alone, they will go into depression and eventually suicide. Well, so, let's go back a bit to, to, to some of the original before we, we, because we're getting to my second question here. So I, I don't want to forget the first of verse elements when you mentioned about purpose, right? You talked about like in isolation, every organization, every if I if I understand correctly, every organism or society um, is basically in survival mode in a sense, like just trying to survive or live among other civilization, and that's their purpose, just to thrive in their space in their environment. Uh, but then what you mentioned is that well, if there's external influence of some way like an et civilization for example in our case then it can derail or change that path but it's no longer just about survival in the space then you may have emergence of new ideas that are based on the contact uh, and i'm it just makes me think about uh about all sorts of tribal stories like from all sorts of areas about you know uh, uh stories about like men coming from the sky about uh uh, some religions, for example, that seem to um, uh, be born out of contact with more advanced uh, civilization or, or civilization that seem to be magical in, in some way. So, you know, is there a possibility that, you know, still thinking thinking about purpose, that we have been purposefully guided? Um, and what does that mean if we were? Right, if we were purposefully guided by an ET civilization, kind of nudge in different directions, because we're no longer just surviving in a space and trying to thrive. We're, you know, there's philosophy and there's ideas that emerge from those contacts, presumably. Uh, so that kind of changes the general idea of purpose of humanity if there are people kind of nudging us. Don't you think so? Well, yeah. <laughs> Every every perception and conception we have about the purpose um, is linked of who we think we are, and um, either, um, for instance, we as a human species, um, for centuries, forever until the 19th century, we believe we, we were the creation of one god or several gods, and I would go back to that because it's the interesting, very important question there. And after in the 19th century, we'll, we'll not continue with this kind of um, scientific explanation from the origin of life. So if you have intelligent life, um, if it's here, the only possibility was that this intelligent life came from a non-intelligent life through an evolution. The evolution was a natural, uh, there was a, a natural um, explanation when we started to, uh, wanted to explain scientifically how life would come, especially that the West um, had entered a conception of time, which um, was a linear time. Um, all civilizations had a conception of a cyclical time. Uh, this is why the swastika, for instance, you find it all around the world, swastika experience. It's like things will ever come back. The, uh, as I was saying before, the notion of linear time going to progress by the way, the, the notion of progress is linked to the notion of a linear time that is bringing us to some a better situation. And this came with Christianity because uh, I'm not going to go into details, but how we change our conception uh, of time. 
So uh, from the moment you have a linear time, you need to have a beginning and an end. And if you have a beginning, you have a beginning to the universe and you have a beginning to, to, to life. If you consider that the universe is not beginning, because it's very strange to, in a logical uh, perspective, to say there was nothing and suddenly there is something. This is supposed to be the correct explanation. There was no universe and suddenly there's a universe uh, with a big bang and all that. But if we consider that simply the universe is here and is infinite, to me, at least, it doesn't make less sense, even makes more sense than to say uh, there's nothing and suddenly there is something. But there's a difficulty because we, our Western minds, cannot conceive that something will be here forever. So, so, so we have really created that it's the beginning. And before, there was not this issue because before there was God and God was infinite and always here. And this is, this is why, for instance, the scholastic philosophy is very interesting because they deal very much with infinity. So the pre-scientific Western world didn't face this difficulty of the infinity because the infinity was represented by God. But when the West started to enter in, in a rational with Descartes on that 16th century, it started to enter in this rational um, the reason, the, 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 this new reason coming after 2000 years after the Greek reason, the reason was this reverse, this reverse of reason. Then the notion of infinity, which was linked to God, was uh, gradually put aside and, and uh, everything started to have, uh, needed to have a beginning and an end. So if you see that the universe was a beginning and an end, you will not consider things in the same way as if you consider it infinite. If the universe is infinite in space and time, life, intelligence life has always existed. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have the necessity to have this life coming from an, a, a lower um, uh, uh, dimension, like an animated matter turning into uh, little bacteria and so on. No, simply um, intelligence life is there, has always been there. And what has, is happening in the universe is not that life appears from an animated matter. It's not that there's a continuation from less evolved to more evolved. It's simply you, you, have, you make a kind of Copernicial uh, revolution is that you have intelligence life that is always in the universe. That is the highest level of the matter. Consciousness is the highest level of the matter. And this conscious matter, uh, which is inter intelligent life, is always in the universe. What change is a movement because everything is movement in the universe. Then it means that life doesn't appear from a lower level of matter to a higher level of matter, but life is always, start always from the highest level. It's, it's, this is a big uh, difficulty, and I'm, I'm not going to go into that, but it's about the entropy, you know, like uh, these things by themselves don't organize, they disorganize mm -hmm. the visibility. Uh, it, 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 so, and this revolution actually is interesting because it goes back to this kind of scholastic vision of God as the infinite and infinite consciousness. Actually, there's consciousness in the universe, um, uh, um, there is consciousness in the universe because there's intelligent life in the universe. Where, uh, how many in, you have intelligent life in one, one out of one billion planet, one million, I don't know. One day we'll know, we'll have statistics, hopefully. But then if we start from the intelligent life being there and always there, mm. and not from the an animated matter that will turn successively and become just then what does it mean it means that intelligent life is in the universe and it is the drive of life to reproduce itself because the definition of life is linked to the production uh, uh, reproduction you cannot have life without reproduction and without the willingness to reproduce and even more the willingness to create and we see that in human beings when you become a couple uh, there's this instinct you want to have children because and uh, it happens the same for you um, for humanities, for intelligent life. When you are an intelligent life somewhere in the universe, at some point 
you are going to want to reproduce yourself. This is why this is a conception of life which I, I, I abide to of life in the universe is that intelligent life spread um, spreads and through an act of creation, through an act of fantasy, because creation, fantasy, pleasure is linked essentially to life. The, uh, the, the life we have on Earth is not purely a mechanical utilitarist. Really, um, Darwin was really a man of his time of his English utilitarian culture. Like when you look at nature, you see it's simply like look at the animals, how they met and all that. It, 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 it's not just things functioning, it's things being funny, things being um, beautiful, things being poetical. So there's like a night of artistic creation in it, which could induce easily. I have been, besides a philosopher and artist, uh, uh, this is how I lived in New York. I was a starving artist. But, but as an artist, I have never been able to feel the, 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 this conception that life was purely mechanical, practical, utilitarian thing. I want to speak about life, about life around us. There's a dimension of, poes, of poetry, of art, of, of, of simply even humor, uh, which is in it, which helps to accept the idea that simply life is created, is moved from one place to another one. It doesn't come from, uh, because what is lesser cannot come bigger in, in, in the sense of matter. Uh, the, the, notion, the notion that matter, an animated matter can turn into life, it's a belief. Mm -hmm. like you can believe in God, or it's a belief. It's, it's a belief and the theory of uh, the Big Bang and the theory of evolution belong to a category in science, which is totally different from any other theories. It's the, um, they are an obligation because human beings cannot live without having an explanation about their origins. And we, uh, this is where I go back to, to the, uh, what you were saying. All cultures on earth, all people, the smallest people in the Philippines Islands, uh, they found some years ago a tribe living in, in the smallest people. They all have a story of the creation. Mm. They all have uh, some, most of the time, in 98% of the times, the entities come from the sky. The, um, and the, the scientists, uh, anthropologists in Europe said, oh, all these are myths which means they don't, this didn't happen, but people have an absolute need to have an explanation about their origin. So they, 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 they withdrew that from any kind of possible historical, even very remote and deformed um, background. It was all myth, even the Genesis was all myth. So what is very interesting is that the, 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 the Western, the science, the anthropology, the scientific said, uh, all these stories are myth because people need absolutely to have an explanation about the origin. But by the same logic, the theory of evolution and the Big Bang belongs to the same myth. Mm. Because people need absolutely, if tomorrow you said the theory of evolution is wrong, it's not possible. It's not because, because people will be facing something that human beings cannot face is a no explanation. So when you look at the way the theory of evolution is supported, it's really supported. You really feel like there is a need to prove. So any little, they went in chat some years ago, a Franco-American expedition. They stay, I think, three years in chat. Like there were 30 people in the desert. They find a little tooth, something, or a little three centimeters of, uh, um, a part of their jaw. And this was big, big discovery of the year and of the decade, because from this little part of the show, they could figure out whatever uh, Mickey, uh, missing link and so on. So you imagine, they spent one or three years, I don't know, whatever time, a huge team looking in the desert and they find something. What does this mean? 
this means that simply when you want to prove your theory and you put enormous means in it and you put not only means but you have all the, the willingness to prove it true and you have the support of the institution you have the support of the science you have the support of the society to prove it true i would say you almost can prove everything true because right. you, you have society asking you to prove it and scientific evidence. So, but when you look at the theory of evolution, it's like you see this forcing, they're forcing to prove things, which seems hard to force. So, um, on the other hand, you have the crop cycles. Crop cycles is not a little thing of three centimeters. Crop cycles are huge things, huge that appear that have no explanation. Mm -hmm. And you see, when, when you want to explain something, you send a team for three years in the desert to find you a little solution to those things, and they're going to say, oh, yes, this is a big discovery of the year. Meanwhile, you have UFOs appearing that have no explanation. You have crop cycles, things that are huge. And then if you don't put the willingness to be explained there, uh, it, it stays on the side. And it's very interesting because we are supposedly living in the rational area but it's a rational area in the past when something could not explain people would give an irrational explanation today mm -hmm. when something doesn't want to be explained because it, it doesn't fit into the needs of society then it is casted away it is put on the side it is marginalized it is considered as something that is not proper to study and what is very interesting in the in the last years we see an evolution where now a lot of these topics which were not proper to study um, become mm, subjects objects of studies by scientists and we have to say something as the philosopher said that the situation humankind is today um, uh, a great responsibility of it is the cowardness of the elites the intellectual elites because today, when you are part of the intellectual elite, you work in a university. Uh, myself, exposing myself with these ideas, I, I got put in danger. I will not go in detail, but already my career has been very much um, affected by uh, my, my, my opinions on, on UFO and, and uh, extraterrestrial life, etc. So the, 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 the scientists, the scholars, are extremely coward. And, and, and they will not take position when you have obvious things happening. Like the crop, the crop cycles, there should be huge investigations uh, done on that. Um, and now it's happening more and more and uh, more. So at least in that area, this, I think, and we spoke about it, Sylvain, there's a, uh, there's a positive change. And, and we'll see what will happen in the next months or next years. Uh, uh... I mean, it's a transformation, certainly, in the last few years, and which is why, in part, we created the alliance. It was because the winds were changing. This kind of topic became a little bit more mainstream, a little bit, right, and more available for discussion. Uh, so things are things that, as you say, um, topics that were uh, uncouth to explore properly by by the elite scientists now uh, are, are we, we're shedding light on it. <laughs> because now it's like, oh, we have to reobserve this, um, which is great, but it's a shame that it was left to the wayside for so long. But, uh, you know, that, that's just the way it is. Uh, uh, next question here. Uh, I have three fundamental questions for you, David. So this is the second one, okay? Um, how should humanity react to a first di official diplomatic encounter with an ET civilization? How should we react to it? What do you well, think? Um, you have invited me here as a, as a, as a philosopher. Philosophers are, uh, uh, try to understand and explain things. And it's not exactly the role of the philosopher to say how people should behave. Uh, this is a, a different area of my activity, which is very interesting. Uh, but so uh, to, to answer to that question, I, I will have to uh, step a little out of the purely um, philosophical, uh, because it, it's the margin. I mean, there's a, um, a line which we're not supposed to cross. Uh, if mm. we are doing purely philosophy, uh, how should people react? 
well, how would people react? I believe that if there is not an awareness brought upon this, there will be a total panic because um, because it's it's going to be a shock. Mm. Suddenly, it's like if you are sleeping and you see cold water. Imagine uh, the religious people. Suddenly, all the belief uh, are going to be questioned. Uh, imagine the governments, uh, the, the, a lot of people who have interest in keeping the world in a certain condition uh, that will uh, see with uh, as a threat anything coming and questioning the position of human beings. Any human, any being is like that. You have, you live in a certain environment with a certain balance, with certain uh, powers, and everything coming and threatening your power. Um, if you are not a wise person, if you are not, uh, uh, if you are wise person, if you are a person with highest ideals, then you you don't identify yourself with your power, with your belongings, with your position in society. But wise are not the majority, and most of people will feel threatened in their everyday life or whatever scale by everything uh, coming that can, uh, and can, uh, can change this balance. So, of course, the balance of things in humankind in every level, in, in the, uh, imagine even the scientific community, the scientific community that has been despising these topics. Uh, imagine you are a scientist, you are uh, right to the end of your career, and you haven't given any attention to extraterrestrial life. You think you have had such a great career as a scientist, and what was so obvious, you haven't been looking at it. It's just you go and you know you're going to die and to be forgotten, and you are going to be considered as part of all these scientists that uh, want so much to look serious and so much to be part of such publication and such institution that they will not take any position uh, towards uh, this matter, even when the discipline uh, would uh, suppose that they will take some position. Um, so there's going to be a, um, a tremendous earthquake, I would say, a human earthquake. Um, this is why this has to be prepared and um, um, people have to be aware more and more of the possibility of this contact in order for it to become to be as soft as possible. Uh, it's always going to be a great shock, but this is something for sure we all can do now is to prepare people that this is something that can very likely um, uh, happen. Uh, I, I don't know if they will come today. I don't think they will come today. The world is ruled by big corporations. Uh, what they're going to come and meet the rulers of the world, that they're going to sit with the rulers of the, the uh, Jeff Bezos and, <laughs> and, and I don't know, the big bankers, and they're going to go on Wall Street and say, oh, we are coming here on this earth and we want to meet you, the bankers, that you are ruling the world in such a horrible way. So I think we we may have to. I, I, I'm not sure, but I cannot speak in the name of any extraterrestrial civilization. I, I'm not sure we're ready yet to welcome them. You know, we were talking about um, Star Trek the other day, and I found the the episode of Star Trek, the main movie, which is not the greatest, but it's the first contact. And you know, it's it's very interesting. Star Trek is uh, they 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 can interfere with the civilization. When they are able to go at such uh, at the speed, you know the warp speed uh, at warp speed, exist. yeah. But once they can go to warp speed, it means they are mature to uh, have a, a, a contact. Um, yes, warp the speed or whatever light speed uh, or, or speed is interesting. But what I think would be more the criteria is kind of evolution of uh, human. Uh, evolution it doesn't mean that humankind has to be perfectly in peace and every issues on human in the planet have to be uh, resolved not that uh, never every issues will be resolved uh, there will always be new issues but we need to reach a minimum uh, stage which i think we are very close to and this is why we are going into this big crisis we are in at the end of the teenage 
you know, the teenage crisis. Every teenager is healthy as a crisis because you are no more a child, but you are not yet an adult. For until not too long ago, somehow the, the destiny of humankind was easy because we were kind of children. We were children under the protection, 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 protection of God. And when you see the attitude towards God, which is like this father is like the father and the mother, or you have some, uh, you go to, to the, in the end, uh, in the end culture is a pasha, a pasha mama. It's like a female entity, either a female or masculine entity. Um, we were like children with the gods. They were the parents, they created us. And they were good for us. They will punish us. Uh, they gave us the rules we have to do, and they will come. This is a, the, the state of a child. But when you reach teenage, suddenly you don't want to be a child anymore. You're not a child, so you rebel against your parents. You reject your parents as we rejected religions. In religion is not a ruling force today, yeah. uh, even if you have religion part of the world where. It seems to it's 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 a decaying it's a decaying uh, and and when it rules it rules in a decaying way so it's not a decay it's not a, it's a decaying force and um, but still we have, we still haven't become adults so we we we, we want to prove ourselves we are uh, always affirmating ourselves in, like the teenage humankind is reaching the end of the teenage but when you are a teenage you also can do silly things. You have also propensity to suicide, to self-destruction, to nonsense, to uh, do um, arbitrarily, um, maybe to generate violence, uh, to make drugs and all kinds of silly things. We know that uh, the, uh, the, the teenage time is a time, it's the most sensitive time for suicide, for instance. When yeah. you have the, 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 the most risk of suicide is when you're a teenager. So we may be committing uh, self-suicide. Uh, well, self-suicide doesn't make sense. <laughs> we always commit self-suicide. We, we may commit, commit suicide. So this is a very troubling time. I, I, I really think, you know, in French, teenage, you call it l'âge bet. It means the, the âge bet, stupid age, or like when you are a little uh, stupid. And I think humankind, what is shown today, it's a high level of stupidity. I mean, this is personally how I feel. I, I'm very afflicted by the level of stupidity of, of humankind uh, lately. The, 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 the level of, of the debate is so low. Uh, well, let's not go enter into that. It's not the subject there, but um, are we going to pass this or not? For me, this is a big question. If we pass it, then I think the reward is like the world thing in Star Trek, the world speed. If we pass this crisis, then I think somehow the civilizations that are certainly, certainly having a look on us, if they don't get, they don't interfere, they don't interfere, they, they look at us and they say, they are not ready. And if we pass this crisis, then I am not sure that somehow the contact will happen. How long will it take for us to pass this crisis? Are we going to pass this crisis? This, uh, this, I cannot, I don't think it will take very long. I don't think that it will last more than, if we continue to be as stupid as we are, I don't think we will last more than 20, 30 years because, but maybe this is going to be a very critical phase. And unfortunately, people need to have critical faces, sometimes a shock, uh, pain, uh, a time of high difficulty and suffering to be able to change. Because people think to not want to change. They, we are going right into the wall. I don't know if you said that in English, I'm using a French expression. We're going right into the wall, into the cliff. But still people, they want to keep the belief that everything is all right. And, we will pass this crisis and I will, going, I will be able back to go back to the shopping and all that. So uh, are we going to, I think there's going to be a very deep crisis. And I think we may witness more presence somehow. They're going to be around the, I, I don't know if the UFO sightings increase or not lately. And if we pass this crisis, I, I'm not certain 
that the contact will happen. It will be a reward. Say, okay, you passed it, you became adults. And we are coming and they may help us. They may not help us. They may help us in some ways because if they're able to travel from so far away, they obviously they've resolved um, the issues of, of, of violence. And this is also um, a, a, an important element. If we, it, it, all these science fiction movies that shows uh, all the civilization, uh, war, galaxies, uh, Star Wars, it doesn't make sense if you are, if you don't control your aggressivity, you blow up, you destroy yourself. So life is maybe created in, 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 in the infinite universe. And, and each civilization has to start from the beginning and prove itself worth uh, belonging to this kind of confederation, infinite confederation of, 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 human, of, of consciousness, of intelligence, intelligent and loving life because intelligence is not enough. Intelligence, loving uh, life, and well, I'm sure they're loving beings. Uh, well, that, that, jump to, that brings us to the last question. Actually, it's a great segue right into into it because I wanted to talk a bit about the future, like uh, knowing who we are and how we behave. Like we have a whole history, and like you said, we were infants, we're in our teenage years, and we're trying to you know reach adulthood, right? Um, so assuming that uh, ETs that are watching us are benevolent, which is, for all indications they are, right? Um, what really is in store for humanity? Like what kind of assumptions can we make uh, that will will kind of join this bigger civilization because it, we'd have official contacts and discussions, right? With civilizations that are able to cross stars and obviously the universe is going to be our neighborhood is going to get bigger very quickly, <laughs> right? Uh, with that, uh, so how does that transform humanity's mindset for itself and the universe when we expand officially the our universe from essentially just planet Earth? Because, you know, most people don't think about you know the stars and galaxies and things like that, right? Uh, to effectively like a community of civilization that all have their own backstory and history and all sorts of parts of the universe like the neighborhood uh is way bigger all of a sudden and way more different <laughs> than what we have here so what are your thoughts about that what specifically uh, um... well what, what, what do you what do you think knowing humanity what do you think will will be thinking of will uh, will transform into in uh, when we get into this bigger universe and this realization Oh, well, uh, well, I think I partly answered to that at the beginning, but I, I'm, I'm going to go more into it. Uh, about the benev benevolent uh, civilization, I remember when I lived in New York, I was invited, it was the beginning of the local TV. It was a local TV. I hope I will find the footage of that. Maybe it was in 94 or 95. And they invited, it was a show about UFOs, and there were two guys saying that if we have a contact, it would be... Uh, uh, threatening contact like that you the, the, the aliens are bad let's say and i was there alone against two of them to defend the idea that if we have a contact it would be a positive contact and uh, it's very interesting how we project what we have done here on humankind we project it on the universe and and i was saying of course with your mind the united states this continent was colonized by people from another continent that destroyed most of the civilization, killed most of the people, brought slaves, and created an, an empire uh, from uh, this new place. So this kind of projection, we project the civilization into the universe um, on ourselves. And this is very interesting. I have, I, I have lived my life in many different countries. And the approach of 
the UFO phenomena changes from one country to another one. Mm. I mean, in Brazil, they have a certain approach. France have a certain approach. In Japan, they have a certain approach. This is so interesting. So in the same planet, where there's even not a unified approach, and I'm speaking, I may speak about the non-scientific approach or, or mm. the people pretending to be scientific, that you can see that, that the vision of the UFO is actually blended into the own civilization, what the civilization says about the universe, they transfer it to the, to, to, to the extraterrestrial life. So the, the countries which have been colonizing powers and have established this vision of everything is competition, have this vision that in the universe, everybody may do the same. So this is a very egocentrical thing, uh, which is very common. We project on others what we ourselves know and have and have been uh, um, raised with. Uh, I wanted to make this little parenthesis mm -hmm. um, about how, how, um, you mean, how, when um, this uh, contact will happen, uh, what impacts, because it's true that before I said, before the contact happened, the sole idea of life existing is going to already make a change. Mm -hmm. But we may very much have the contact without the previous proof that extraterrestrial life existed. And, 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 and then they will come and uh, I know that you are leading when well, you're part of a project to build an embassy and you have the image on the back. And uh, I think this is um, um, uh, an important element um, in the terms of uh, we need to institutionalize things. Uh, human beings will give credit. You know, the credit we give to things is actually linked to a, a social acceptance. Things become acceptable when society accepts it. Uh, in the Middle Age, people will be tortured before to be killed. Depending on the crime, you will have different tortures. And it was socially accepted, so people will accept. And this is terrible because when something is accepted by society, more or less human beings are able to accept everything. But there's always a balance that comes after. So, but we have to know this is one uh, part of the human psyche that is not just an individual, it's part of the society. And most of people, they feel they need this kind of social assurance to be able to accept something. So if this is why we need to institutionalize things, you and I and all the people that are convinced that this extraterrestrial life and that extraterrestrial may come, we don't need an institution, but we are not alone, we are a minority. And the fact to, to make it on the paper and to make it in the stone through a building the notion of building is important because buildings are not just a place to pray, to live, to that they symbolize something. This is why kings will have palaces. This is why religions will, will, will build because building in the stone means for the mass of people, this is real. So when there will be a building, an actual building of an embassy for extraterrestrial, for many people, it will mean this is real. This is, this is I would say, an automatic uh, 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 primary reaction. There's a building, it is real. And also the institutionalization into the paper, into the international institutions like the, the UN, uh, which is the biggest one, or the UNESCO for things, which is linked to the UN. So this is a part of, 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 of the task of making it real. When you put on paper a company, that even if the company didn't start yet, from the moment you put it on paper legally with all the different uh, tenants to the matter and the, the proper uh, national or international transnational agreements, then your company 
start to be real, even if you don't start to do any business. So we need to do the same. We need to force the past through the importance of the institution, not once more, not for us. It doesn't, it will not make any difference, but for humankind, because we cannot do things in this humanity without taking into consideration everybody. Mm. It doesn't mean that everybody has to be supportive, but it means that we are body humankind. And, and if, you're, if your foot is, 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 is slow, if your foot, you will not be able to walk uh, very far, even if your brain is very quickly. So if the brain goes very quickly, but you, you don't train your legs and your body, then you, you can have the greatest idea, but you will not be able to go walk and do them. So it's the same for humankind. Sometimes it takes time. It is slow. It is frustrating because uh, you see all this bigotry. You see, but this is part of a human deal. We are a united humankind and the slowest have to be taken into consideration, even if very often it's upsetting and you want to say, come on, don't be so slow, look <laughs> in the sky. And so by making this effort of islands, and I think the alliance is a great, um, it goes in this sense of, of putting together a certain number of people, because today we, we live in the times of the numbers. You know, when Descartes, uh, wrote his meditation, metaphysical meditation, which is a book that is supposed to open what we call the modernity. Uh, he, he printed the book in Amsterdam, I don't know, 200, 300 copies. And he sent it to a few people that were the greatest mind in Europe at the time. And it didn't matter. You didn't matter to have millions of followers. It was a different civilization. It was a civilization where it was considered that what was important was the elite, and the people would follow, but now we live in the time, the democracy time, in the time of the masses. So we need number. So if you can get in the alliance groups that put together thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people, it will participate to mm. this uh, concretization of, of, of the project. And, and um, how should the contact happen? Uh, well, the embassy is, I, I, so, uh, it's a gen uh, really a, a, a wonderful idea. It's, it's, it's a genius idea to have the embassy because who can be against an embassy? The embassy is a symbol of, uh, of talking, of tolerance, of, um, of peace. Uh, the, 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 the diplomatic corp, uh, you know, you cannot go into the embassy of someone, it's a kind of a sacred thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, even in times of war, it's very rare that you walk into someone's embassy. So the embassy is a symbol of, of, of discussion of, of, and respect each nation has its, uh, its embassy. And um, I believe that the building of this embassy and everything before and joining forces um, is going to do a, um, a great job. And meanwhile, as I was saying before, things will happen that we don't have control. In. We don't have control of what's happening in the big scale. You know, the, the powers at SEC are so huge that we are nothing. I mean, they can wipe us out square. They cannot, actually. They cannot wipe us out. Ideas cannot. Oh, but, easily. Easily. Yes, uh, again. What, what would happen? What, what do you think will happen to us in our Shimas? Um, as a humanity after contact, after we realize all this, we realize we're not alone. There's multiple civilizations. They're benevolent. Uh, we broaden our, our, our perception of, of the universe because of that. How will humanity be transformed, you think, speculatively from what we are now and to, to something completely different? Well, or is there, um, it, it won't, won't, maybe, maybe there won't be that big of a transformation. Well, it is a transformation that decides what will happen from us, from humankind, and what this civilization may or not may bring to us, transmit, give us. I mean, if it's a technological advanced civilization, they may come and say, here we are. If it's a civilization that created us, then 
uh, we have different uh, figures here. If it's a civilization that's just there and said, oh, you're ready, we are coming, we are part of, uh, we are coming in the name of all the civilizations here. You had your evolution, you started from, from, from being mud and you turn and you had this evolution. So let's say from an evolutionist point of view, humanities appear in the universe and when they reach a certain stage, uh, then they can join this federation of, of enlightened or adult civilization. Uh, this is, uh, so they come, say, oh, congratulations and, and welcome into the team, but, uh, or either they created us, but in both cases, these civilizations will have a, a, a huge scientific and technological advance on us. And not only that, in, in the way they will have resolved issues that for us as are like, like if you have a child, it's even funny for parents or for adults when you see a child struggling for something that is nothing, that you know that as an adult is nothing, but you see the child struggling and, and, and sometimes you help or sometimes you let him struggle, sometimes you make a video, sometimes you, so it's the same. We are struggling for things which are just childish, which is all nonsense. Uh, I will not give examples to not create here issues which are not part of the topic, but I'm very tempted to give a very <laughs> obvious uh, issue that has affected all of us in the last years, which is nonsense. So um, they have resolved all these issues. So the, the humanitarian uh, contribution uh, may be as great or greater than the technological contribution. How will they give the contribution? We don't know, but I, I'm sure they may give uh, something. There will be a curiosity. There is going to be an interaction. Are we going to be genetically compatible with them? Are they going to want? Uh, are we are going to? Are we going to breed with them? Are we going to? What's going to happen? Because if they come, are they just going to come a few in the embassy? Are they going to come more and say we would like to have some of us living here? Uh, are they going to say, oh, well, some of you can come to visit us in the planet? Uh, I mean, we have to think about it. Uh, all that, what is sure, and I hope to be young enough uh, when this happens, is that there's going to be a, a reorganization of the entire planet. In all the, 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 the changes, people actually, most of people dream of to make this planet better, to fight against contamination, to fight today against, I don't know, so many issues. And um, then there's going to be, I, I think, kind of frenetic in the positive sense, a, freni a frenesy. You say in English, frenesy? frenesy I think so, yeah. Frenesy. Yeah. Uh, Frenet I mean, frenetic, frenesy, yeah. <laughs> frenesy between the people of goodwill, the people with a, a, a real political sense into a theological sense, the sense of organizing the city, the police, and and all the all the the because part of humankind is 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 has a very strong willingness to work for the community. Um, uh, some people have not everybody has the same willingness, and it's normal. It's part of the distribution of the. So there's going to be a percentage of the population that is just going to go into. Uh, a, a very intense activity of reshaping uh, laws, reshaping constitutions, reshaping borders, reshaping uh, the way we look at things. And it's going to be done not in a kind of um, imposing an intolerant way as some ideologies do and I've done in history to say, we are going to change the history of this country and they kill everybody that doesn't think the same way. This will not happen. Because once more, this civilization have resolved the aggressivity and violence issues. So they have a level of love that would spread directly in humankind. It's going to be absolutely a wonderful moment. moment. There are going to be resistances because especially, uh, in, in the religious areas, some religious people will not accept um, the questioning of God. Mm -hmm. uh, some will try to adapt it with God. Uh, but let's say that the people who come are not, they don't come through the evolutionist 
um, a possibility option, as I gave earlier, let's say, okay, you, are, you evolve and you reach this point, which is the vision scientific have that life can evolve everywhere. I, I don't share this vision personally, I make it clear. Um, let's say that there are people that who created us who arrived. Then for the religious, there's going to be two options to say, oh, everything we believed in actually was not so wrong, but it was adapted to our ancestors. And mm. now we just need to upgrade. So I would say the genius, attempt, uh, the genius religious people may be the most zealous supporters, but that will need kind of upgrade and conver uh, the conversion. And it will be not the majority um, because uh, the authentic religious people, people were religious, not because they were born in some religion, but because they really have this religious um, um, strength, which is a great quality, will we'll join and we'll say, oh yes, we believe that uh, the Genesis was God, but we realize it's not God and, and, and great, they are coming. A great, of, a great deal of people will abandon the religion because they will say, well, we, we like this God always around us and all that, and it will be too difficult for them. And there will be confusion for one generation or two. And there will be a part of extremists uh, that they will have to be watch open. Um, we will need, for sure, a, a, a military to be turned into police because this, there will be acts of, 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 of reaction, of despair. And it's not going to become paradise from one day to the other because you know this inner sea and, 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 and we will need uh, the, the national armies will have to join and, and there will be parts of the world where there may be a resistance. And of course, this done with the most constraint as possible. They will have still to be a coercive force to be there to neutralize uh, mostly religious fanatics, but also, um, you know, if you're a billionaire, and you have made your fortune in selling weapons and destroying the currencies of other countries and, and impoverishing countries because you decide that sort of the cacao, uh, the price of cacao has to be divided by five. Uh, it happened some years like Ivory Coast lost most of its income. Situations like that happen all mm -hmm. the time. So if you are part of this greedy financial elite, that you know that your record is very dirty, that you only have been thinking about your greedy interest. You have, you have been an egocentric because today in the world, we, we, we are like so sensitive about some kind of disturbance, like uh, the children are this kind of syndrome and all that, all this. but we are simply accepting to have psychopaths, people mm -hmm. that are moved by the worst greedy um, tendencies which are pathologic and the pathology of greediness how can it be multi-billionaire of hundreds of billions spending in one week what you could feed one uh, ten thousand people in one year so these people these people which are who are actually basically in control of humankind today some of these people also might not be very satisfied because they know that their afterlife is kind of condemned. So we may also have a resistance from the very uh, powerful, and we may have a resistance for the people who have based the value of their life on things that will appear to be totally wrong. Hmm. If you have all your life, you have been preaching that uh, red is uh, something white is red, and suddenly from the sky, they come and say, no, white is white, or black is black, and I don't <laughs> Confusion and and um, then there will be resistances. Let's let, be, let we we need to be um, aware of that. That even if they come with love, even if they will be, uh, it will be a time of great excitement, uh, comparable to the great revolutions that have been on humankind, uh, French Revolution. Let's say uh, there will be uh, no head cut, of course. Um, but it's not going to be all easy. It's going to be exciting. Why do you think of it's exciting? And after one generation, 
then we will start to build up on this planet a real paradise because we can do it. And mm. then we will enter the adult age, the golden age, uh, as it was um, announced by uh, some religions. Uh, but it will not be from one day to the other. And this is why we need to join and, and really prepare and, 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 and have as many people trained and, uh, and, and, and able to face all the situations we are going to face because this will happen in the next 10, 15 years, or maybe in the next 100 years or 200 years, 500 years, but it can happen very quickly. I hope it will happen quickly. I hope I will see it, of course. And um, congratulations, Silva. Well, we, David, we that. certainly hope that it's going to be quicker than 200 years uh because because we'd like to see it in our lifetime or at least like uh, you know quickly like the et embc should be built and, and open in 2030 which is only eight years from now in principle so as far as structure uh is concerned that's fairly short term whether or not we have a civilization actually using it or coming down at in that year or or when thereafter we or, or could be even before that because they don't need the structure to to visit um they never did they're already here but um but our our, our objective is that it is a fairly short term thing we, that's our hope but um to your point like the alliance does talk a lot about preparedness right like are we prepared for that eventuality you mentioned kind of a revolution and uh i don't forget who it, uh, i don't remember who it was but uh, somebody we, we, i was talking to earlier in another show uh compared um this event to like the industrial revolution uh and the perturbance surrounding it uh but also like you know hyped up like quite significantly and if you sort if if you ask historians about the industrial revolution it was not not all positive it was a lot of disruption in the job market lots of people freaked out like <laughs> people lost they lost their minds and some, because it, it, it was such a, a a change of the society in a fundamental level that there was a lot of pain for one two three generations in fact when that happened so we can suspect uh, like you said, maybe like this, there's going to be perturbance, there's going to be disruption, there's going to be people that refuse to believe and all that stuff, and terrorism perhaps for maybe a few years to a generation, perhaps in this case too, because nothing is instant. Um, but I'm extremely curious as to who we shall become uh, after such a revolution, because you know each revolution brought massive social changes massive scientific changes each time it has happened and in this case not only will we ourselves change our own paradigms and have a, a, an internal re uh, revolution in some way but we'll also have access to all this inaccessible information through contact to these with the, the civilizations which is not something we uh we encountered so much in our own history so I mean, it, it's a question mark. I, it, I don't really have an answer to what we will become. <laughs> we don't know, but it is exciting, like you said. Um, so uh, any final thoughts, David, before we uh, we close? Yeah, I think, uh, yes, I would like to finish on that. We'll become ourselves. We, we, we haven't been able to be ourselves because the, the when you look at the life of people, of most of people, is kind of a tragedy. Um, I, I feel a lot of compassion, compassion for most of people I encountered and most of people who are living on this planet because I feel how these people are not living at the level of their potential. And, and if you look at all human beings, imagine you were born in, in a mining family in Wales or whatever during the Industrial Revolution. When a child, eight years old, you were going in the mine. This is a tragedy. Mm. Maybe this eight years old child would have been able, his life only could have been better. He will die in a mine. He will die at 40 years old because your lungs, you know, the coal mine, your lungs, well, you will 
you will breathe black, you will speed black, you will die at 40 years old. Mm -hmm. So how many broken lives have there been? I mean, it's a majority. Mm -hmm. And I know this is kind of liberal vision, like, oh, each one has what he deserves. This is kind of easy. Um, if you are born in a, as a slave and your parents were brought on the ship as a slave and you were born in a plantation, there is very little chance that you will become uh, Amadeus Mozart or that you will become a, whatever. And so um, the life of most human beings have been tragedies, uh, which mean a tragedy, I mean, they didn't live up to their being. So this phase we are going to enter, actually is going to be the beginning of humanity. We have, we have been living in a pre-humanity in which most of humans have been, haven't been able to reach the level of humanity. They mostly have lived in the level of bestiality, of worrying about what I'm going to eat, where I'm going to sleep. This is a level of pre-humanity. So what are we going to become? Simply humanity. Humanity will start at the moment when every single human being who is born will be given the possibilities to fulfill entirely his being. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, then he will have the choice to do it or not. But the conditions, the material conditions will be there that go ahead, you are coming into this world and you have all the tools, all the elements for fulfilling, to elevate yourself uh, from the level of gravitation of, of being fulfilling your basic needs. No, forget about that. You will be able to elevate yourself to the highest of humankind, of your humanity. So we are just starting, I told you, we, are, we will just be able to start to be human beings and will become somehow gods because like in the Olympus, you will see the gods were, were fulfilling the highest functions, the highest skills, and will do, will travel in the universe and will find other civilizations and we may very well create life. So we'll, we'll become humans and becoming humans will become um, gods probably for, for others. So so in a way, like you're talking about human humanity self-actualizing, right? Becoming its true self beyond survivalism, right? If you can maybe mention Maslow's pyramid or like a, or, or other concepts like that, but at the same time as well, what you just mentioned is to to become uh, the highest form of being that we 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 could imagine in our history as i.e. gods like gods were perfect they were immortal they were uh hyper competent <laughs> whatever else that's got the image we've had of gods right uh we will become that thanks to technology and knowledge and, and wisdom and being able to to self-actualize uh that sounds pretty good to me <laughs> well, I, I think i think we haven't been uh, humans yet uh, we have been uh, bad animals because animals are made to be animals, so when they behave like animals, they are fulfilling their being. Yeah. Uh, we have been in a level of animality um, because to be worried about your material needs is to be in a level of uh, animality. Um, uh, and um, only at the moment technology will free us from the worries of uh, uh, needs and we'll see the other day I was watching a video of, of in the 60s at the end of the 60s you know the 60s people were like they were everybody they were together and there was this kind of touching and love and so different from today people were not afraid one of the others and everything seems to be possible everything to, there was this kind of great liberation but why there was a liberation because after the war in Europe or in the world there was there were 30 years of prosperity. Mm. Some people, until the shock of the, the, the shock, the oil shock of 1973, there was no problem. When I asked my mother when she was young, there was no problem of employment. So when people are not worried 
they live in in a prosperity that uh, they have not been too much intoxicated by the culture of having having because this is another issue. Some people have a lot but still want to have a lot. This is a, a, a deep problem. But when you feel free from the needs that some very spiritual beings are able to do that because they're able to, to, to live with nothing. But this is not given to everyone. Most of people live free from the worries of earthly needs when they are sure by their society and by a set of, of institutions that if they fall sick, they could go to the hospital, that they will never be in the street. Then you see naturally how this translates into a, a liberation and, 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 and creativity and a kind of a dancing mood. When you look at the mood of the 60s, uh, it's not the same mood that what followed. People mm -hmm. were not worried. People, it's like at the end of the 1900s, there was a very good spirit. People really believed that industry and, and techniques and where you have so many declarations that we have resolved, we have reached the highest level of development. So <laughs> the 1900, the end of the 1900s, it's very optimistic. People are optimistic. And when you see these images of Paris in 1890 or London, you see everybody, of course, there were mines, there were uh, issues, problems. But even the working class condition was had improved greatly from the beginning of the century. And World War I came and destroyed this dream because it was the industrial war, war with weapons that were done in the factories and not yeah. anymore on the horse. Anyway. So there was big, then there was big uh, disillusion. And, and in the 60s, we started to have again uh, this period. Where do I want to come to? That people, they are not, most of people are not in love with freedom, and what do I mean? It's people will look for security and stability before freedom. If freedom will be the priority of people, freedom will always exist. The priority of people is stability and security. A few people, for uh, freedom is the most important for them. This is a creative class. The creative class cannot act without freedom. So the creative class will always put freedom first. Mm. But for the majority of the people, stability and security is first. When, once they get stability and security, they feel secure, then they will go in a state of mind for freedom and they will allow themselves to, to, to liberate from the fears of my survival and having, and they will go themselves in a kind of freedom drive and all the society will be moved by this kind of freedom spirit. Mm, and, and this what has happened in all these prosperous times, the people that suddenly felt free from the burden, from the fear of not having, from the fear to end up in the street, from the fear of not paying the bills. So when people are free from that burden, from the fear, they change collectively. And that will happen at a scale never seen in humankind. Suddenly people will see a civilization which has overcome all the issues that we think are so difficult because we don't have a model. Before there was a model of somehow the model of God, that the perfect being, but we don't have a model. We are like orphans. We don't have anyone to show us, oh, well, yes, he did well. We all have personal models, what we know people that overcome this and that we can rely to. But as a humanity, we don't have a model of humanity that overcome all these issues. So when uh, a, a civilization is going to come and say, oh, we look, we resolve all these issues, all the big problems for you. This is for, it's for us, it's peanuts. And this will give so much trust in the people that they will say, oh yes, we can resolve all this. And there will be like a kind of explosion of, of, of sensuality of, of, of uh, why do I speak about sensuality? Because there will be, will be a planet of, of enjoyment. And, and moral restrictions will blow up and the virtue, we are in coming back in the virtue. I'm not going to well, so it that becomes a planet topic. of creatives, basically, like you described it, right? Yeah, like, yes. because people are not yes. worried. It becomes a, a civilization of creative people, which, which is a, a, a sensual state. Yes. The, par the paradigm of the creativity will prevail over the paradigm of security. 
Hmm. And, 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 and this, uh, I, I was speaking about the 60s, about the end of the 19th century, because it's some periods in history where we had this feeling that we were resolving all material um, issues and we will overcome all these problems. And then suddenly we can see how naturally people suddenly feel uh, creative. And creative, we, uh, we cannot even imagine the world of, of tomorrow, the world of after the contact because it will be ruled by creativity. It will rule by a sense of trust that, you know, like this philosopher Tocqueville that is very well known in the United States. Tocqueville said that after the people of his generation will die, nobody will know the spirit of the people of the Ancien Regime. Ancien Regime was the, 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 the system before the revolution. Right. And that you will be able to know facts, that you will be able to read books, but the spirit will disappear. So the spirit of a time is the hardest thing you have to imagine, you can imagine, or you can remember. Uh, if you lived it, yes, but if you didn't live during a time, it's very difficult to imagine the spirit. The spirit that will come after this contact, we cannot figure out. It will be, because one thing, changing it's all the rest that changes and 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 the human being as a as a plasticity which is amazing and brings to some confusion but i'm not going to go to this topic but the plasticity of human being is amazing and and we live now under a certain uh, uh, numerous constraints uh, um, inhibitions uh, that we are even not aware of it it's like when you are very bad in your work or you live in a very disgusting place or you have a very bad situation in your couple, uh, you really realize how bad you were, you were once you finish it. You mm-hmm. say, how, how, was I, how was I able to handle and support all this? And it will happen exactly the same to humankind. Suddenly, doors are going to open and we are going to go in a phase of emancipation, of self-emancipation as the humankind, as individuals, that we look behind and said, how? How could have we been able to, to accept all that and, and all this situation, to accept to work as slaves, to accept all these restrictions, to accept all this nonsense, about the, 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 the media, the political leader, or whoever, how will uh, there's going to be a rejection mm-hmm. of the past, very strong, like in every revolution, a rejection of the, the, the a rejection of all the people that actively participated to the present uh, state of of underdevelopment, and there's going and the people who are leading the world today know that they feel that they feel that if there's a contact and the civilization will come with something that will put them in a situation that they will be somehow banned from not only society, but banned from the memory. And mm. this is one of the worst that can happen to human beings to know that when you, that when you die, that you think you achieved your life and you did something good of your life and to die knowing that you did shit of your life this is one of the worst feelings that people can have. And this is why I was talking about, about the resistance. The change is going to be so great uh, that uh, there's going to be a lot of suffering. A lot of suffering. There's going to be also rehabilitation. Some people are going to, to self-redeem themselves and, 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 and we have to be forgiving. And there's, they will need a lot of forgiveness to some people because some people did really bad. And, and, and spread a lot of stupidity and a lot of nonsense and a lot of, of lies. So it's going to be, it's going to be a moment that will be unique in the history of humankind. It's a, a transformative moment, right? Like a, a very a deep transformation. transformation. Yeah. Yes. But we, we live with, like you mentioned it before, we've lived through these transformations before at different scales with different revolutions. And we always look back and saying, wow, how stupid were we about saying or seeing things this way? And then we, now we, because now you found something better, right? And now you look back, it's like, wow, that's, that was dumb. 
Um, <laughs> our history is full of those events. So I, I think that's kind of the perfect imagery, really, because we we can't truly know what we're going to think or feel after a certain revolution. What we assume is that it's going to be a, a positive transformation, especially since we're going to live in a probably a world of abundance without you know the uh, with uh, everybody upgraded to to more focusing on creativity, which is all extremely positive. Uh, but we've never been in that civilization just yet. So we don't know what it looks like. We don't know how it feels. But for sure, we're going to look back at like how why was 80% of the population scrambling just to eat? Right? Like that, that doesn't make sense. Why did we allow this for so long and so on? Just like you said, uh, I, I think that's a great, uh, great vision to, to conclude, in fact, because I, I think it's important to to look at the possibility, the positive possibility of this very, very uh, anticipated event of meeting an ET civilization that's more advanced, uh, because we'll get within a fairly short amount of time, maybe a generation, you know, something like that, uh, to a state in which the stupidity that we are suffering now will absolutely look like stupid, like stupid stuff that will be will put behind us. So I like that idea. <laughs> and uh, I, I just want to thank you, David, for participating in the forum and, uh, um, you know, putting the uh, the glasses of a philosopher on like like you like you do with uh, with your massive background in philosophy uh, and having that discussion with us and kind of uh, illustrating all sorts of ideas about who we are and where we head and how we think. Uh, and let's focus on the future. Let's focus on this goal of making that that new mindset, that new civilization mindset uh, and revolution, because that's, that's the world I want to live in. So thank you. Thank you, Sylvain. 